Hello and welcome to Science Made Fun. Look at rocks and say they look a bit boring, and on the face of it I'd have to agree. But as is often the case, things aren't always what they seem. The fantastic part about rocks lie in the way they were formed. Often it takes millions and millions of years and extremes in pressures and temperatures. There are three main types of rock and today we'll look at all of them. First up it's igneous, which is Latin for fire. Under the earth's surface is a layer of molten rock called magma. As it's less dense than the solid rock, it floats upwards and cools. If it cools under the earth's crust, then it's called intrusive igneous rock, and if it cools on the surface of the earth, it's called extrusive igneous rock. It is the formation of this extrusive igneous rock that is the most spectacular because it involves volcanoes. Magma erupts out of the volcano and is renamed lava. This lava flows down the side of the volcano and is cooled when it comes into contact with the air, which makes it begin to solidify. However, different parts of it cool at different speeds, and that's what causes crystals to form. The slower it cools, the bigger the crystals, and a good example of this is basalt. Yet even bigger crystals are formed by intrusive igneous rocks like granite, and these form underground. In contrast to the very hot and sometimes violent formation of igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks are formed relatively quietly. Sedimentary rocks actually cover 75% of the world's land area and they are formed when rocks get worn away by wind, rain, waves and other weathering. This creates tiny particles of sediment and these particles form layers forming on top of each other at great pressure. At this great pressure all the liquid gets squeezed out and the rock is formed. Now that's all well and good but it's not exactly super exciting. But the really cool thing about sedimentary rocks though is that they're storytellers. They can tell us a lot of information about the history of the earth. The contents of each layer can tell us how old the rock is. Yet far more fun is that the remains of dead animals and plants can get trapped between the layers, and this is how fossils are formed. Obviously by working out to which animal the fossil belonged, we can estimate when they got trapped there. Examples of sedimentary rock are chalk, limestone and sandstone. I'm sure you've seen chalk used a lot in classrooms, but sedimentary rocks can also be very useful for building, because they're soft and easy to cut. In fact, the White House in Washington DC is made of sedimentary rock. Well, that's two down, which leaves just one more type, and we call that metamorphic. Now the word actually means change in form, which gives us a clue as to what it's all about. Metamorphic rocks are made when other rocks are changed by high temperatures and pressures. Obviously the molten rock can be very hot, but what causes the high pressures needed to change a rock? Well, it's to do with depth. The more deep into the earth the rock is, the more it has above it pushing down on it. Similarly, if it's trapped under layers and layers of sediment, this causes a great pressure. The two most widely known metamorphic rocks are slate and marble. Slate is a very common material in home building, just take a look at your roof. Marble is formed from limestone and is used in amongst a lot of other things, fireplaces and floors. Well I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, so until next time remember, science is fun.